Hello and dzień dobry, if I'm saying that right to all my Polish viewers. I thought today we'd look at all the Polish gas masks in my collection, where I've got about five or six of them. Um, and I thought that'd be interesting to look at. So, we're going to start off with this one, which is the Polish MC1. And basically, this is a Polish version of the Czech CM3. And the Czech CM3 was designed to be like a lightweight, cheap civilian gas mask that could be used by the military if need be. And a Polish MC1 is basically the same thing. Now, from what I've read, these did actually, or they were planned to be maybe made as military masks under the name something like PM88 or something like, or PM78, something like that. Um, but they never did went into service, or they never did go into service, I should say. So these were kept as the MC1, which I guess is like Civil Defence Mask 1. And... Yeah, it's a very basic mask. Um, I think in Poland people have said this is called the mouse often because it looks a bit like a mouse. Um, it's got either plastic or bakelite sort of furniture here. You've got your XL valve with a bit of wire in there so it reverberates a bit more to make your voice a bit more audible. And you've got an intake there for your 40mm Gost filter. So basically this is the same as the check mask except the rubber's not quite as good and the straps aren't quite as good. And the Czech one also has a bit of bake light there, but as said, it was meant to be a very cheap copy Poland could make uh, to make a civilian mask. Like rather than making GP5 for civilians, they wanted to make these for civilians, and then you know potentially have it as a reserve mask or something like that. Obviously, the Cold War never went hot; these never got used. But here they are. So these come with normally a standard 40 millimeter civilian filter um, that you know these are issued with. This one's dated '82 as far as I can tell, and yeah, they look like this. People have said, are these filters safe? Personally, I would not use them. I've not seen asbestos reports on them, but because all of the Soviet mask filters that have been tested we know are asbestos positive, I wouldn't really trust the communist Polish ones, just because, again, the Soviets are sort of in charge, and they're probably saying, you'll make filter to this specification? Uh, so it has asbestos in, I'd imagine. So, if you've got one of these, don't breathe through it. The same goes for the Czech Warsaw packed ones and everything else. There was also a tube of anti-dim paste in like a little lipstick kind of thing that came in this, which is quite handy. Because um, you can see some of that smeared on there. Right. It is a six-point head harness, which is fairly good um, for a cheap little mask. And it works the normal way of just basically pull through all of the fabric cords. And then you can stick the mask on although it's not that easy as said and done to put the cords on. Again, I'm going to put it on the wrong way, because it's easier. Yeah, so this is a very tight mask. You can hear a bit of reverberation there on the uh, sort of little voice diaphragm sheet, which is actually quite a clever idea just to stick a bit of metal outside the exhale valve, because it does make your voice a bit louder. Anyway, this mask is uh, fairly good for what it is, as I said. It's sort of one of those cheap and nasty masks, but it does its job quite well of being a cheap and nasty mask. Just like the GP5 does, there's no quality problems with it at all. It's a simple mask and it works, you know, well at being a simple mask. So, there you go. A good place to start the video. It's not my favourite mask in my collection, obviously, but it's interesting. I can't get that strap to do it now I've got the mask on. But... Let's have a look and see if it will pull through. No, I've not got the mask on. Yeah, fine. So, the straps are a bit fiddly. As I said, the Czech one definitely has better straps than the MC1. Um, but So, if you're going to get one, I'd recommend the CM3 over the MC1. But the MC1 is basically just what it is. It was designed to be a very cheap mask for civilians. And considering some of the really shoddy masks that have been made for civilians in the past, it does that job quite well. So, next up, we have the Polish OM14 mask and bag. Again, I think some of these masks have several different names. Um, so I'm just going to use OM14 because it's the one I hear the most often, but it's basically the Polish version of the SHM41. The only real difference between it and SHM41 is it has the cool zinc eyepieces and sort of intake XL valve, um, which you know are like shiny and zinc, sort of silver coloured. So you put it on the exact same way as you would a GP5 or any of the other SHM helmet masks. This one comes with an uh, EO14 filter which is confirmed to contain asbestos, so don't use these. If you really wanted to use one, follow the video I did the other day 
Uh, make sure you do put the P3 pads the right way round because somebody did point out in the comment on that video that the P3 pads should be the other way, so always read the instructions for your individual pads. The place I bought them from gave them the wrong instructions. Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to tie this into the filter now, but you attach your hose. Apparently this was also nicknamed the elephant by Polish soldiers because I guess it looks like an elephant in its trunk. So obviously you all know how these masks would work. The hose goes into the bag connected to the filter. The filter, there's a hole in the bottom of the bag so you can breathe through the bag into the filter. And you put that on and if you have your standard um, OM14 SHM41 style mask. It has a Tissot system that keeps the mask defog fairly well, or you could put anti-dimming paste on the inside. Intake exhale valve works fine. If you're familiar with the GP5, you know this mask works. So, yep, that's this mask. Uh, it works fairly well. And yeah, not much to say about it. It's the Polish version of an SHM41, and it's a well-made SHM41, so... Yeah, it's a good mask for what it is. Okay, next we have the Polish MUA. I believe this has another mask like name for this mask, like SCZ something or other 41. But basically, it's the M14 or the M41 with a little voice diaphragm on the nose, like a little button. Looks a bit like a skull to me from the side. Um, but yeah, good mask. It's the exact same thing as no M14. It just has a voice diaphragm on it, so just to put it on. You'd use it with the hose and everything like the other one. But yeah. Nice and simple, this one. It would come in the same bag, I guess, normally. I think these are both used for industry use and military use. I've heard some have black plastic on this, and some just look like this. I don't think it really makes a difference to the quality of the mask. But there you go. That's what it's like. Uh, if you're interested in the inside, let me just flip that around. You can see the Tissot systems in there, and you can see where the voice diaphragm sort of thing is in there, and of course the rest of it is set up like your standard SHM sort of GP5 setup. Okay, now the one everybody loves. Um, it's my SR1 casualty mask. So there we go. There's <laughs> this monstrous thing. So I talked about this in the other video. Uh, I didn't put on correctly in that video, so I'm going to see if I can put on correctly now. But this giant thing is designed if you have a wounded soldier with a head wound or maybe if you just have somebody in a hospital who can't put on their own mask. And the idea is you wrap it around the head and it's got lots of room in case you, know, you really need to delicately put it on and they've got bandages on their head and stuff like that. And then you tie it around. So that's why it's got the straight jacket look and all this stuff. So let's see if I can actually do it up properly. Okay, so that's that on there. Now apparently this bit I have to turn around like that. And now this bit gets wrapped around. If I can find the end of this thing. Okay, so. Again, I think this would still be a lot easier if you had somebody else helping you to uh, put this on. Right, let's try again. So. I'm trying to use the camera's viewfinder, which I don't know if that's making my job easier or harder, to be honest. But yeah, what I do now is I tie that bit, and then I tie these tight round the back. Uh, I'm not going to try and tie all these now, just but that would pull the mask tighter to my head. That with that tied should obviously keep this on, and then... So yeah, that looks like it sort of works. <clears throat> that thing is quite claustrophobic to be honest, especially when you're wrapping this around your neck. Because people said, yeah, you turn that on the inside so it's a cushion, and then like the strap goes around the outside. Which is fine, but you still feel the pressure building up on your Adam's apple, and it feels a bit like you're being strangled with this thing on. So, yeah. It would definitely be perfectly competent for its job, and as I said, I tested it, it does work. But, you know, I personally don't really like tying it up around my head, and then thinking, what if it gets stuck? So, um, yeah. The SR1 is a very creepy mask, uh, I think it looks very cool, it's very sort of retro and weird looking, so yeah, I'm a big fan of this mask, but 
at some point I'll try and do a full video where I tie it all on. Maybe I'll have to make sure somebody else is around in case I get into real trouble uh, so I don't actually have this thing stuck on my head forever. But um, there you go. The SR1 is very cool, uh, definitely probably the most interesting of the Polish masks I have, but I still have one more to show you, so let's look at that one now. Now we have this thing, it's the MP4 gas mask, I believe its nickname is Bulldog, and it's an M17 clone of sorts. It's actually got outserts on there. Now I was lucky, when I bought this mask it was second hand and somebody had already put the cheek filters in, so it didn't uh, make me, you know, punch myself in the head repeatedly actually trying to get the cheek filters in. Um, now, the interesting thing is some people have told me this mask is still in service in Poland, and I have no idea why, because I've never got an answer back, you know, when I've asked why is it still in service. I don't know if it's like a police mask just against riot gas, but some people say that um, the filters for this are still in production. So, if the filters are still in production, I find some online, uh, and they're actually NBC filters, not just particulate filters, uh, like, so they're like freshly sealed ones, I will order some, as long as they're a sensible price. I will put them in the mask, and that will probably be a video of, look how frustrating it is to try and shove cheek, fil cheek filters in a mask. As I said before, giving reverse, uh, giving birth in reverse. <laughs> trying to do that. Um, and then, we will uh, see if it works. However, um, the reason I'm not really enthusiastic to wear this mask for a long period, uh, with the filters that are in there, is these are probably from the time of communism, and therefore they probably have asbestos in. But <clears throat> I will briefly put the mask on um, and breathe very little through it and speak so you can hear it with the speech diaphragm. So, six point elastic head strap system as well. Again, uh, easy enough to do up. You can actually breathe through those cheek filters fairly easily on these. It under mask pressurizes so it works. So yeah, this actually reminds me a bit of the Brotherhood of Steel helmets, like the T-51 Power Armor helmets or whatever they are. I guess just because it's a cheek filter mask and it's actually in grey. But I guess if you're wanting to do some sort of like Fallout or sci-fi cosplay or something, this would actually be a really good mask for it. Because having an M17 style mask in silver does actually look quite like it. Alright, the exhale valve is there. Visibility is fairly good. As I said, this has got the outserts on and I don't want to take those off. But yeah, uh, this is actually a fairly good mask. Or it's a very good mask for a cheek filter mask, but as you know, I'm not a fan of cheek filters. I'll probably take it off now. Just because I don't want to know what's lurking in this filter and finding it's lodged in my lungs. But there we go. That is the MP4 Bulldog. Uh, it looks like this bit can be pulled off if you want to get out the valves underneath. But obviously I don't really want to pull that off, because I'm probably going to find a lot of this doesn't really go back on very well. I think that's on well enough. Uh, but yeah, it's got these weird furry outserts as well for the um, cheek filters. I don't know if that's like an extra particle layer actually of those. If that is, that's quite clever. But the filter, a cap doesn't seem to be unscrewing, and like I said, I don't really want to vandalise this cheek filter mask. If you're wondering what it looks like inside, it looks like that. But yeah, as I was saying, it's quite cool because it looks like a bit like a power armour helmet from the old Fallout games. Because it's in the right colour and everything, well, obviously it's not made of metal. But there you go, um, Jankoya for watching, if I've said that right, thank you for watching. Um, I hope you liked it. That's all the Polish masks in my collection until I inevitably get more when I see them for sensible prices online. Um, and I'll be doing other nation videos via gas mask when, you know, at least the nations I have enough gas masks to talk about in one video. Because people keep saying to me, can you show all the gas masks in your collection? No. The reason for that is simply because now I have over 70 gas masks. I think it's something like 65 individual gas masks now, plus duplicates, plus half face masks and things like that. I don't really count as gas masks. There's just so many, there'd be no way I could lay them out or, you know, have the time and inclination to take all of the masks out, talk about them briefly, or even show them, um, you know, all like that. So what I want to do instead is sort of sort them by nation and stuff like that. So we've had Poland's one today. I can do all my British masks at some point. You know, and then I could do, for example, all my Czechoslovakian masks or Czech Republic masks, you know, at another point, things like that. Um, and go through it nationwide, I think that would work better. But anyway, thanks for watching, Jankoya, if I'm saying that right. 
Um, I hope you've all enjoyed this video.